In today's video, I wanna discuss why I think that the Sony a7S III is better than the FX3 when it comes to documentaries, weddings, and other run and gun type shoots. I've owned the a7S III for almost a year now and have been fortunate enough to work with the FX3 for the last couple of months as well. So I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of the differences between these two cameras. And when I say differences, they are pretty marginal and most of them have to do with the build and the ergonomics. But those things do play a big part in documentary and run and gun type filmmaking. And if you're considering purchasing one, you're probably comparing it to the other. So I thought I would make this quick video to discuss some of the key differences and why I think for my shooting style, the a7S III is the clear winner. And if you're someone that loves the FX3 or that's the camera that you're gonna purchase, I'm not here to bash on anyone's choices. Uh, I just wanna explain why I prefer the a7S III and this might help you in your decisions as well. For those of you that are new around here, my name is Riley and I'm a documentary filmmaker that likes talking about everything from filmmaking and creativity to faith. I'm also someone that likes to discuss and work with Sony cameras. So if any of that interests you, be sure to subscribe and follow along. All right, let's dive in. Both of these cameras have the exact same sensor and the exact same processor. So they're capable of producing the exact same image with the same codecs, including ProRes RAW. So the big differences are obviously gonna come in the build quality and the ergonomics. The most obvious one is the top handle. And I think it's the FX3's biggest selling point. And for me, it's actually the biggest disappointment. And the reason for this is because one, there isn't a record button button on the top handle, and two, the top handle has some give and flex to it, which really makes me nervous given that it's bolted into the body and has a cageless design. You'll notice this when you pick up a heavier telephoto lens or just when you apply a little bit of pressure. So for me personally, I would prefer to use a sturdy and rigid top handle that's attached to a cage every single time. I just feel better when I'm filming with it and I know that I'm not gonna break the camera when using a good sturdy top handle. The next thing that is really obvious is the lack of an EVF on the FX3. Depending on your shooting style, this might be a good thing or a bad thing. Obviously, if you're filming in a studio or you're flying the camera on a gimbal a bunch, you're not gonna notice the lack of the EVF. But if you're someone like me who films weddings and documentaries, you probably aren't gonna need the EVF until you need the EVF. If you're filming in bright sunlight, you're just not gonna be able to have that assurance that your composition or your focus is where you want it if you don't have the EVF to rely on. The little flip out monitors that the camera comes with are great and have definitely improved over the years, but they're not bright enough to compete in direct sunlight. And there have definitely been a handful of shots over this past year that I don't think I would have been able to get had I been using an FX3 just because I relied on the EVF so much given the angle of the sun and where I was filming. The other big difference between these two cameras is the placement of the joystick and the overall button placement. The joystick on the a7S III is located on the back of the camera, meaning that you use your thumb to use and maneuver the joystick, whereas the FX3 has oddly enough placed the joystick on the very top of the camera, meaning that you use your index or your pointer finger to move the joystick around. Now, your thumb is a lot more flexible and dexterous than your index finger, so I think to me, the a7S III is a clear winner in this regard for being able to move the focus box around or quickly change settings in the menu if you use the joystick for that. The way the a7S III lays out the buttons also makes a lot more sense to me. It feels like it was obviously made with the hybrid photo video shooter in mind and being able to access those settings and buttons quickly is definitely something that the a7S III does well. And while the FX3's button layout is labeled really nicely and definitely has more of a video centric layout, it isn't always easy to access these buttons. It's kind of awkward to reach and hit the record button and find some of the other buttons. 
I could be biased from just using the a7s3 for so long but to me the way that the joystick and the buttons are laid out makes changing settings so much easier on the fly and when you're filming in a stressful location or you can't repeat the shot being able to access those settings whether it's the focus box with the joystick or something else that you have preset to a button being able to access those things quickly is really important in a documentary or a wedding type setting. The a7S III also has a mode dial on the top of the camera, whereas the FX3 has a mode button on the back of the camera. Now, the reason why I prefer the mode dial is that without having to pull up a menu and flip through the settings, you can, in just a second or two, change that mode dial to be S and Q or three preset menu settings. Now I've set these to be 24, 60, and 120 frames per second. And for me, this is a lot more convenient and easy to change between these settings and frame rates than having to pull up a different menu and find the setting that I want to switch to. Now this isn't a huge difference, but those couple of seconds could be the difference between getting a shot or missing a shot. And so for me, having that button and that dial on the top of the camera on the a7S III is a big difference and something that I definitely prefer. In my opinion, when you factor in the K3M audio module that you can get for the a7S III, it's definitely the more flexible and versatile and even modular option over the FX3. Now the K3M audio module is this great little accessory that you can get that is essentially exactly the same as the audio box that comes on the FX3's top handle. You get two XLR inputs, up to four channels of audio. You get the little dial that you can adjust the gain manually without having to go through any of the settings. You get line level, mic, and mic with phantom power, as well as several other great features. And the K3M audio module comes with a pretty good microphone as well. When you pair the A7S III with the K3M audio module, you get a microphone and an EVF for only about $200 more than the FX3. And in my opinion, that's the better value between the two options. I really have been enjoying using the K3M module on top of my a7s3 and i feel like it's definitely helped elevate it to be the perfect documentary style camera for the types of projects that i like producing so i'm super happy with my investment and definitely don't plan on trading it in for an fx3 but if you're an fx3 owner or that's the route that you're going to go i don't think that there are any wrong answers like i said before both of them produce amazing images and are both great cameras if you're an FX3 owner, let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. I would love to hear your perspective. Uh, I don't feel like I have all the right answers, and so I would love to keep this discussion going below in the comment section. If you like this video, I would love it if you would hit the like button below as well as consider subscribing. It really is the best way to help me support this channel. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.